Hey everyone, I hope you all are ready to upcycle some thrifted items into some high-end looking decor. This first project is going to be this beautiful cutting board. Now this board is very well made. It seems high-end itself, but it did have a lot of damage to it. So we're just going to go ahead and paint this with some DIY crinoline paint. I do have the DIY crinoline paint and other products um, of DIY in my booths at the Hickory and the Hudson Antique Malls. Now we're just going to go ahead and give this a good coat covering everything and the back. And then, and then we are going to be using one of the IOD Kind Disregards stamps with the color Soil in Archival Ink. I didn't have any brown in my IOD inks or my stays on, so I grabbed my archival, which means it is not waterproof. So, I mean, it is waterproof and it dries quicker than water-based inks because I wanted the uh, text on this to be not black because we're gonna be doing some coppery looking accents to this. The mold we're going to be using next is also an IOD mold, and I think it's their old Christmas tree, or it's the Christmas tree one they brought out this year in 2023. Now, I have pre-made these molds in, in um, advance with the amazing casting resin. I get mine off Amazon. I'll have the link in the description box below. I want to let you know that some of my molds, I don't feel all the way up, if that makes sense. I will make sure I get all of the little details but the thickness wise, sometimes I make mine thinner because I don't want them so thick standing off of my project. That is totally up to you preference wise. This one is one of the thin Christmas trees that I made. And again, basically that just means you put enough resin or, well the resin you can do it with, but not so much uh, the clay. You can pour the resin and get it in all the little crevices, but not fill it all the way up to the very top of the rim of the mold. And it gives you a thinner mold, which I like in some instances. I'm using DIY aviary mixed with crinoline and just a little bit of queen bee to get a warmer moss color because I really wanted this tree to look um, a little bit like moss or spruce color which it's, it would need a little bit more of a blue hint to be closer to spruce, but I love this color and how it turned out. And I'm just taking a brush and, you know, putting, making sure I get it down in all those little nooks and crannies and then drying a little bit with my heat tool. Because I made this mold in advance with the resin, I am able to go ahead and heat it up. You can pop these in the microwave or you can use a heat tool, heat gun, or a hair dryer to warm them back up so they'll be pliable when you glue them onto your projects. We're going to be using tight bond triple thick or quick and thick glue i love this stuff for molds for the molds on this project to give a little bit more dimension to this i'm going to go ahead and take that uh, potting soil stamp pad around the edges uh, to outline it and give it a little bit of distress look because I'm not I don't want to sand this uh, I don't want that kind of look I'm going to be using some accessory molds with this that are not part of the Christmas tree IOD mold these are just a generic mold I got off of Amazon I'll try to see if I can find them and put them in the link uh, description box link below below sorry it's early and I still can't talk um I'm using the Pennies from Heaven Liquid Patina from DIY. This is the first time I've used this. You know, in my previous videos, I said that I really didn't have any coppery paint. And when I was doing some of my stock the other day, I thought, you know, why not try this? Because I'm selling it and I would like to see how it works. It does cover well. You want to make sure when you're using the patinas or um, not necessarily the paint, but some of the liquid patinas from DIY that you stir them up very well because they are all natural and they have sealers in them so they will need to be stirred. Uh, this is kind of thin before you stir it, but once you stir it, it does thicken up and it will provide more of a coverage. If you don't stir it, it's gonna look very clear. All right, so now what I'm trying here is, I thought, well, maybe if I paint 
the star which is off of the mold the Christmas tree mold with that um, DIY crinoline paint that it may look different in the background make the copper even deeper but it did not it didn't make a difference um, so I just from moving forward with that I just left on the amazing casting resin color which is white now my star I did cut some of the points off to make it shorter to fit above my Christmas tree as well we're just going to do the same thing using that uh, quick and thick behind these little molds to put them on. I really wanted to enhance some of the stems that are in the Christmas tree mold. So I thought I would take a small brush and just go around some of the areas on this um, mold and with that pennies from heaven. And I really love how this looks. This next part I was not videoing and I thought I was. I started using some of this and I'll have it listed in the description box below, but it is some like coppery mica flakes. I wanted something to go below the bottom of this tree and I thought about, you know, faux snow and just different things and I started looking through my stash and you all know how I'm trying to look, use a lot of my stash, especially things that was from my junk journaling days or just paper crafting in general and I found this beautiful jar of mica flakes that are in like a bronzy copper co copper color so I just put some of that triple bond on to my piece of wood and then poured the flakes on top of it and then just use my finger to kind of you know help press them on to the glue. I really wasn't too sure about this part. You all will have to let me know in the comments below what you think about the mica flakes added to this. What we're going to do is we're going to seal these in the whole piece because we don't want any of those falling off because they also have a residue at the bottom in the jar that's like very fine texture of copper which ends up getting on this piece throughout where, where the text is and it really just gives it a great look but I didn't want that to continue to fall off you know as this piece is used. I go in with once this dries I go in with some dark wax to those uh, coppery pennies from heaven places to give it a deeper richer tone to match the mica flakes and I use the pennies from heaven with a little brush kind of on the edges near the potting soil and on the sides just to tie in that whole copper look throughout the piece. In these photos, I added a bow and I also put one without a bow. I think this would look great if it had just a really thick piece of rope in that uh, hole at the top. This next project is definitely something totally opposite from what we just did. So the first thing I want to let you know is this was an old cutting board. You can see the oils or whatever coming through there. It was very distressed. And I went ahead and painted that with a coat of Fancy Farm Girl. It is dry, even though it doesn't look like it. We're going to just do one of those kind of drippy, messy paint looks with red and green. That way, if there's anyone out there that loves this look and they want to do even a large piece of furniture for this, I've seen pieces of furniture or even chairs done like this just for the holiday season. We have a small sort of sample doing that. So all I'm doing really is putting some of that marquee paint on here. I'm using the DIY clay based paints because they really are truly the best for this. Some chalk paints will work, but they just do not work as well. The clay paint is so easily reactivated and blends so nicely into itself. I wouldn't use, uh, you know, other paints for this unless it is ch some chalk paint. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that uh, mossy color that I added or that I had on the last project. I had some of it left over, so I knew it would be a good lighter color to kind of add in to get these two, you know, closer to blend in together. We end up doing even some more over this after we get it kind of where we want it. Of course, you guys know, I just have to do it. I, I don't know. Um, so I'm just keeping brushing these in together and spraying them. There's lots of ways of blending. There's tons of videos. You can go to DIY uh, main 
YouTube page, Debbie's Design Diary. She does lots of blending videos on large pieces if you want to learn more about blending. Now we're going to go ahead and add some of the Salty Kiss, which is a um, kind of a, it, it's a Christmas green as well, but it has more of a blue teal tint to it. I wanted to go ahead and add some of that in. Like I said, we're just going to be adding a bunch of colors in until I get it the way that I like the, the very last look, if that makes sense. To get started on one of these projects, what you want to do is pick out all the colors that you really like that you'd love to see blended together and get those set up and ready to go with a bunch of different paint brushes and a water mister bottle or just a water bottle or you can even use a cup of water and a brush to blend these with. I love using the spray bottle. I think it really helps and some paper towels because you're going to want texture in there. At least I do and that's what dabbing back the water does as well. I'm sorry about the barking. That's my little mini weenie Sophie. She was not happy as someone was driving a loud vehicle by. She just She's old and cantankerous. All right, we're going to end up adding um, some Monet's Garden to this. And we're going to let this dry for a little bit while we pull out a mold. We are going to add some more paint to this. We're not done yet. Uh, once we get the mold and transfer on, I see that it needs some more colors added to it. So we are going to continue to work on this. We're going to be using the IOD Fairy Merry Christmas transfers on this, as well as one of the IOD frames molds. You'll see it laying right there. I do end up picking out one of the fairies that definitely has some red and green. I mean, a lot of them do, but I wanted to make sure the red and the green was prominent in the fairy. So I found the one that I want, and we're going to add that uh, to our frame. We are going to be cutting this, of course, down to size to fit inside of this little frame. And I'm going to pull out my uh, Fancy Farm Girl green DIY paint. I love this color. I feel like lots of greens are Christmas greens. And this one is like a Christmassy woodland green to me. So we're going to be using it. This one's quite old, so it is clayed up quite a bit. You can take the clay that's on the top and either remove it and put it in a different container, add a little water, or you can put it down in, scrape it and put it down in the bottom of your jar because it will reactivate with uh, the other paint and soften back up. So don't get rid of that paint. It's great for texture as well. Now that we have that transfer added, I'm going to go ahead and take more of that Fancy Farm Girl kind of around the edges where I've added it to blend it in with the paint that's there. We want those edges to not look like they're like they don't blend in, like it's just sitting there on it instead of blending in with it. We will add some more stuff to it later to make it blend in even more. So wait for that step coming up. I've went ahead and added my frame with that quick and thick glue. It's not necessary to use anything else because it just attaches so quickly. And now that I've got it on there, I see that I want some cream colored paint with this. So I got out the crinoline and we're just going to add some of it. We're going to go back and add some reds and greens on top of it to get it the way that I want. I want the crinoline to come out because of the cream in the transfer. We're going to go ahead and seal all of this in. Now, don't think I am crazy. We need to seal this in because we're going to do some sanding and we need for some of our colors to stay where they're at. If we don't seal it in and we sand, we're going to lose too much of our colors. I've learned this lesson before. There is times that you're not going to want to seal before you sand, but for me, this is not one of those times. And yes, I shouldn't be dipping straight into my uh, DIY um, top coat. Uh, this is big top that I'm using. I should be putting this in a separate container. And I do sometimes. It really just depends. But um, so far, I've used it pretty quick enough that it didn't make a difference for me. So the biggest part of the sanding at this point is I want to get 
some of that cream color back off of there. Now, you guys know me. We are going to add paint back to this. I'm sorry. I, like I said, you, you know that if it doesn't look the way I want it and I feel like it needs something else, no matter how many steps I've done, I'm going to do it. As I learn, I will learn, or as I practice more, you know, I will learn where and when I need to add the paint back before getting almost to the end of the project and then re-adding. Maybe. I don't know. I just have something that says you need to go back and do something different, even though it should be that I'm at the end of the project, if that makes sense. So right now we're just sanding some of this uh, crinoline back to, to just leave a little bit of it. So at this point, I thought if I added some dark wax to this, that maybe it would give me the look that I was going for. Guess again, no it did not. So we do dark wax, th dark wax this, which it does end up playing a part in the total look of this, but n probably not enough that I could have not skipped this step. What I did was I just kind of stepped back and went to something else and then came back to this and really saw that maybe there was a little bit too much of the fancy farm girl green on here and that I really wanted more red and green with not so much of the fancy farm girl. So I got the Monet's Garden out, which is a truer, deeper Christmas green or just green in general. And I started adding it until I got as much of it that I wanted on there. And I did the same with the marquee. When you're doing a project, and you may already do this, if it turns out or is heading in the wrong direction, step away from it, even if it's for a longer period of time than just an hour or two. Maybe it might take a few days. Then go back to it because truly it does make a difference, or at least it does for me. Because sometimes when we do projects or we start them, we think, oh, that would look good. Oh, and we just keep adding and adding. And it kind of gets away from our original thought, which is fun. A lot of times it turns out even better. But sometimes if we go back to what our original thought was, which was with this piece, I should have stayed more with the darker green and the darker red. And it did end up looking how I wanted it, but it took a minute and it took me stepping away from this piece. So uh, I, you guys will have to let me know what you think about this process, about the almost getting to the end and then, you know, kind of starting, not necessarily over, but starting further back. Let me know what you think. So I set it aside and let it dry and I needed to reseal it because we still need to sand it for that final finished look, kind of like the process that we had before. This time I'm just going to use clear wax. It doesn't matter. You can use the liquid patina or not liquid patina, but the top coat DIY uh, big top. But I'm just using the uh, DIY clear wax. I love the way that sanded wax looks and we're going to do some sanding on this. So I thought why not, you know, just use some of this. I go ahead and wipe some of that wax back and now I'm going to take my little finger sander and go back in and do some more sanding. I feel like it has just enough of that crinoline uh, on the frame and I'm going to get back some of that crinoline, crinoline from behind the green and red and also sanding that blends those colors in better than just having, you know, patches of paint on there. What's going to tie this off is we're going to use some gold rub and buff and I really think that it makes a difference in how this looks. You guys, again, just let me know what you think in the comment section below. I mostly use my finger, but I wanted to go ahead and make that frame seem like it was blended with the piece and pull some of the gold from the edge of the frame up because you can see my finger is, it, there's a line of green in between the frame and that gold. So I take my brush to blend that in and then pull it up so that that makes it seem like the gold is blending the frame and the base together. Once I get this finished, I feel like that some of the gold is more blotchy and patches and a good way to fix that is sand it back. So we're going to use that finger sander to sand a little bit of the gold and bring some of the paint color through the gold to give it an even more distressed aged look and to get rid of those patches and blotchiness of the gold. We have sealed this piece several times with different waxes. We're going to do it one last time because we do have uh, 
some areas that I sanded that I want to look smoother and that sealant will do that. The biggest part of this project is number one, it's practice. Number two, it's a cheap piece. I'm not ruining anything. It's an old cutting board with some molds and some product. Maybe the product itself, if the piece doesn't turn out how you like it, you are wasting product, but that is the whole purpose of practice. I've not ruined a large piece of furniture. I've not ruined, which you guys know how I feel, even if it doesn't turn out how you like it and it is a large piece of furniture, sand it back, paint over it. You truly never ruin anything, but practicing on items that doesn't cost that much feels better and helps people to feel more relaxed. So. Here are the photos of this project. Y'all will have to let me know. I did add a bow. I'm not sure about the bows, but it needed something to cover that hole up and a bow was my choice. Our next project, we're gonna be using one of the new IOD stamps with the doors and windows. It is called Portobello Road. I've been so excited about using this and I just had to wait to get through some fall projects and some Halloween projects to start this. I really wanted this video to have a lot more of stamps and molds in it. I plan on more of these in the future. I want to know, do you guys like these videos? I know a lot of people love the cheaper projects, but I really want to use some of these higher end uh, pieces or, or um, supplies. If you think about the cost of how long these are going to last you and per transfer, honestly and how many times you're going to use a mold they are not that expensive you all i promise you so we're just going to start out with this little lady i have watched a few videos on this with the iod sisters to make sure that i'm masking these off because she, i want her to be in front of my bakery i'm using the iod ink in black i've also just took a thrifted sign and painted it with some sheepskin chalk paint from Waverly, no, folk art. And now I just stamped her with the IOD black ink. I'm gonna dry her because we're gonna mask her off. Most of the IOD stamps come with a mask, which means you can put something over your stamp and then stamp on top of it. And you'll see me do that coming up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my little bakery, even though that was really not necessary. First, I needed to lay my mask on there, but it was a pretty quick process, so it didn't make a difference. The IOD ink does not dry super quickly and I did ink this up very well. I'm going to mask my little lady and then I'm going to take my bakery and stamp right on top of her and the mask in the area that I want my bakery to be. I didn't pull my stamp off of here to use this. You can. I pulled my lady off but honestly I love it when you're able to not pull these stamps off because it keeps them in place for a very long time if you can do that, that's great. If you can't, just pull them off. They'll go. They'll stick back on there fine, but it's really nice to be able to just keep them in the same place. Uh, I should have done that with my lady, but it's kind of hard to ink them up without getting ink on the other stamps too, unless you put something over the other stamps, which you'll see at the top. I did not, and I have a little piece of that flower box uh, above my bakery, but that's all going to get covered up, so it's not going to matter. When making sure your ink gets over your whole project. I am just taking my hand and finger and rubbing it all around, making sure to heat, hit each spot. If you look in the bottom left of my bakery, you'll see I did miss some of my buns. I don't even notice that until I go back in with something else later, you'll see. It doesn't matter, it's okay. It is a handmade product, but if you wanna make sure that you get it all, you can use a, um, roller. You can use um, the palm of your hand. I'm just very careful about not smashing my stamp too hard because to be honest, I would rather miss a few spots and I could have went back in with my stamp and fixed that, but I just decided not to. It wasn't really worth it. Um, but anyways, um, if you smash too hard with your stamps, you'll muddle the image and you'll sometimes get a double image. So just be careful with that. I just showed you that I'm using a piece from another IOD stamp from the rural scenes. I really wanted a little bit of a walkway area there, but I didn't want to use brick because we're going to use some of that brick as the background 
to make it look like a building and I didn't want a brick road and I thought well I'm going to look through my other IOD stamps and see if anything might look just like it's a little walking area to give some lines and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the mask over what I've already stamped that I don't want covered with this and then use it uh, on top. As you can see my masks kept moving but you can put these tape these down with paper tape or a little bit of sticky uh, spray but I just kept fixing mine because I mean, I'm not taping that down I mean I don't know maybe sometime I might but not with this one since I got since I already have the masks on here we're gonna go ahead and pull out some of this brick from that Portobello Road and we're just gonna do some areas it's not we're not gonna link it together perfectly we are not gonna brick the whole area around here and just make it haphazardly like it's an old brick building that maybe some of the brick has fallen off. There is so many more things you can do for scenes with this stamp. You all, the investment is, I can't explain how much the investment is. I don't sell these products. I would love to someday, but I don't. But I, any stamps or molds you get are going to repay you a hundred times over so if you can afford the investment one piece at a time it's very well worth it i'm just taking that black ink and going all around the edges of this piece and even sort of on the sides just to blend in and add some of that black ink with the stamp image the stamped image on the front i'm going to go ahead and seal this with some of that big top let that dry and then we're going to add some stuff to the top of our bakery to give this more of a 3D look with some texture added to it, I've just pulled out some gold things and some pine cones and some little um, greenery that we're going to use on this project. The first thing I'm going to do is add this bow. That way I can work my greenery underneath of it and out to the edge. And I'm going to use some of this type, type bond glue as well as just a little bit of hot glue to give it a um, temporary hold. Since this is such a flat surface, I don't want to just use hot glue. I'm not sure if it will stick. Um, you know, we always hope it does, but I'm going to be selling this. So I went ahead and poured some of that Type Bond out onto a wax paper so that I can dip my pieces into it instead of trying to get it on each piece with the tip of that uh, glue bottle. And then add some hot glue as well for temporary hold. I don't use a lot of glittery things in my projects. I do like glitter, the look of it in minimal maybe, or in the right, I guess, setup. But I loved these gold glittery pieces. I got them in a huge Christmas lot that I purchased. You all would not believe the Christmas lot that I purchased. It came with a seven and a half foot Christmas tree. It came with a bunch of tiny trees, tons of, pro of uh, stuff that I could sell in my booth so when I went through it I saw these and I thought I was going to use them in a project now I went ahead and wanted to add some gold color to my bakery and to my lady and I looked through my stuff and I was going to use the gold metallic paint that we've been using but I found that I had this gold stickles and I thought that that would definitely tie in with the gold in the greenery so I'm just taking a little brush and I'm just hitting highlights on different areas that I think the gold looks good. You guys will have to let me know what you think about this. Now, what is a project without some gold rub and buff, especially at Christmas? So we're going to go ahead and take some rub and buff and add in little areas to just make this look even more Christmassy. Comment below if you like the gold glitter on this one and let me know what you think about the photos of this one coming up. This next project is gonna start with a thrifted piece. I've had this in my stash for a while. I think it's a Hobby Lobby piece. It is quite heavy, but it's not, of course, a traditional window. I'm going to go ahead and add, well, I'm sanding just a little bit uh, to kind of blend it in better, but then I thought it maybe just needed a little bit more paint. It looks like, you know, it does have a coat of paint. I don't know, something started on it because the windows are going to have to be clean. They look like they have paint on them. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of that sheepskin chalk paint just to blend it in a little bit better and seal this with Big Top to get that 
part of the piece finished. I'm going to be using some vintage style postcards that I found on Amazon. I think there's 80 of them in this. In each one, you get so many designs. So I'll link those in my description box below. And I'm going to be using some of this 1912 Christmas music, not Christmas music, just music sheets. Because the postcards don't fit perfectly in the frames, they're smaller. So we're going to have the music as our background to frame the postcards. And I will be using some of these postcards to send out for Christmas to my family. So it was a win-win when ordering them. I'm going to be using a glue stick to attach the music to these boards that are the part of the frames. I think I just use a glue stick to do that. And then just a little bit of glue on the center of the postcard to have it stick to the music. It's not necessary really to glue or Mod Podge probably either piece down because they're going to be held in pretty tight with those windows. So the glue probably was not necessary. You probably could just cut the music to the size of the boards and then you would probably definitely need some glue in the center of each postcard to keep them in place on the uh, board until you get it into the frame. Now that we have all of our postcards in the frame, I didn't do this all on here. This video is going to be really long as it is. I know you all have been asking for longer videos, so you're definitely getting it with this one. But I went ahead and did all the rest of them off screen, and we're going to go ahead and add some greenery to the top of this. I've had that greenery since last Christmas. I think it came from Hobby Lobby, and this is a pick that definitely came from Hobby Lobby on clearance after Christmas. So I'm what I'm doing is I want this to be the center of my greenery so I'm just kind of making it into a T shape leaving the piece that's holding it together at the bottom of the pick downward I'm going to cut some of that off because we're going to use a staple gun to attach these to this wood I just felt like these pieces were way too heavy duty to attach them with glue I'm not saying you can't use hot glue or glue in general but we're going to use staples in conjunction with glue. The little red uh, pit berries were sticking straight out and I wanted to recurl them or just curl them in general. So I just grabbed a pin and wrapped them around to do the curling technique on them. I'm showing you up close how I use my staple gun to do these. And then I'm going to be using a screw with my drill for this large piece because the base of the stem was very big and the screw I thought would work perfect for this. We're going to finish this top part off with just a red and black checkered buffalo check bow with some tight bond glue and some hot glue. We're going to make sure that that's laying on top of that stem so it'll have a place to connect and some of the wood. I thought a pine cone would finish this off so I went ahead and used some of that uh, tight bond glue and some hot glue to attach it to the bow. As you can see in the photos, I went ahead and added some gold rub and buff just to give it a little bit more of a glitz look for the Christmas season. As I'm showing you here, this next project is more of a process or a technique than it is an actual project because we're not finishing a product or a piece, we're making things that will go on our pieces. So I've seen a lot of sparkly things out shopping and I would like to buy them, but there's no reason because I have plenty of pine cones, berries, and greenery for the Christmas season, but they just don't have the sparkle. So I went through my stash and found that I had a lot of glitter, a lot of mica flakes and things that are used on these. And I want to use it because the thing is some of the liquid stuff that I have that can be used for this, it goes bad. So let's just get that used up and then if I don't have the stuff to make my own later on, I'll just buy it that way on clearance or hopefully thrift it. So I'm going to show you how to take items that you may already have and add some sparkle to them with things that you may already have in your stash. The first thing I'm going to do is get out all the things that I want to add a little bit of glitz to and I'm going to set up a little station with some bowls that I can dip into. It seems to work better with something like this to be able to dip. So I'm mixing together some of these glitters and uh, little mica powders that I have to add to these pieces in one bowl. 
I'm going to add some white paint in another bowl and I'm going to add some Mod Podge or any kind of sealer in another bowl. Now that we have our sealer or Mod Podge in one bowl, our watered down white paint in another bowl, and our sparkle in another bowl, we're just going to dip. We're going to dip whatever we want into the either Mod Podge or the clear coat. Once we dip that in, we're going to tap off the excess and then we're either going to use a spoon. Uh, I did use a spoon at times because sometimes dipping didn't get the glitter in the areas that I wanted. So I used the spoon to get it down in the areas that I wanted. If you want white on your pieces, I went ahead and dipped mine into the white and then just added the glitter on top because the paint will serve as a glue. You can seal it later if you want, um, but the paint, I didn't use it that much. I didn't use the white paint as much as I thought I would. I only used it on a few pieces just to show you the examples, but I mostly just used the clear um, glitters and the clear sealer. I also found that a brush helped with the white just to give it more of a blended look. And I do use a brush on some things to get excess clear coat off of them. I hope this gives you some ideas to upcycle or alter some of the things you already have. You can use gold glitter and I do end up getting some gold glitter out. You can use just about any color of paint if you want to dip your green into red paint. Uh, if, you wanna ha if you have some red berries you want to add green paint. You can use any color you want or any product that you think would look good to give a little bit of highlight or color or sparkle any season, not just Christmas. I just added some more of those mica flakes. I have them in a silvery color and in a clear. You can get the clear ones definitely from Tim Holtz. He sells the mica flakes. His mica flakes, you can change colors. That's another thing you know there's a hole we could dig deep here we could go down the rabbit hole but you can take tim holtz's mica flakes and you can spray inks on them you can drip inks into them and paints and change the color of them i grabbed some of these nouveau drops i have a bunch of these too i bought a huge lot like six years ago off of ebay that had a bunch of these nouveau drops in them i was looking for well, I wanted something different that was in the lot, but these came with them. I've never bought a bottle of these new ever, um, but I thought that I would try to use some of these in case someone has Nouveau drops and they wanted to dip into those. So like I said, we're experimenting here, using a bunch of stuff and seeing how it would work because they have a glitter in them. And then also they dry clear and they dry really, really pretty. So I thought that we would use them and they're a little bit thicker than the Mod Podge or a clear coat would be. So stuff will stick to them and stick to the greenery a lot easier. So like I said, just dig through your stash, see what you have to make your own little station to glam up some of your stuff or change colors of things. I even did some buttons and some logs and some little pieces of wood and some eucalyptus leaves. Now you will have to let me know, is this something that you might try with some of the stuff that you have in your stash? This next project is going to fulfill some of the things that I've been wishing for my booths in this Christmas season. I really want to have some red just pops of large items. So the basket you just seen, I took and painted it a beautiful color of marquee red from DIY on the bottom and the inside. And I painted the lid with that sheepskin chalk paint. What I'm doing here is I have cut pieces of this Christmas candy cane transfer that came out of the Christmas Cottage IOD book this year. Some of these are still on Etsy. They are a little higher price, but they are well worth it. Most of these are only 50 cents a piece if you count them and divide them by the cost of the transfer itself. 
So if you have to pay a little more, you may end up paying a dollar a piece, but that's still a great deal, even compared to the Dollar Tree. So this would have been nice if this would have just fit perfectly on there, and all I could have done was, you know, just rubbed it on. But it didn't, so I am making it fit. I didn't want a lot to be stuck in the middle of that seam or on those leather straps. The seam, some will get in, but I did not want any on the leather straps because they will crack over time, and I didn't want it to mess with the transfer. I feel like the seams on the wood will not do that. So I'm just cutting it out and placing it where it will fit in the areas that I want it. Once I got it to where I wanted it, I did go ahead off camera and just do all of the rub on rubbing with the transfer stick and now we have it where we want it on this basket. If you cannot already see, I do have a little bit of a mistake. I don't know that's a mistake, but it is a tad off center on the bottom right, but you know what? I'm not stressing too bad about that because this is handmade and I didn't want the Christmas word to go over too far into that seam. So I knew when I put it down and I rubbed it on there that it would be a little off, but I'm okay with that. We're taking rub and buff and going over those straps just to give them an even more worn aged look. And we're gonna do that well out throughout the basket. I do want to explain the reason I left the painting out is because you all have seen me paint plenty of items and I don't want this video to really, really be very, very long. That is why I did go ahead. Like I said, I went and used DIY marquee on the base, the uh, folk art sheepskin on the lid, and then I sealed it all with big top top coat. What do you all think of this transformation? I really thought about keeping this for myself, but it's going in one of my booths. And if it sells, great. If it don't, it'll go into my stash. This next project is actually very adorable how it is. It's definitely 80s or early 90s. It's primitive, but we're gonna give it a makeover because that's what we do on this channel. I did thrift this, I think for $2. I went ahead and gave it a good cleaning. It did have some kitchen junk on it. I started out with a fusion paint and then I thought better of it because I wanted more texture than fusion gives and I also wanted to distress this back some. So I switched over to a DIY crinoline paint and then also I had this Dixie Belle paint that I found on clearance and it looks exactly the color of gingerbread to me. It's called pine cone. Uh, a lot of people paint gingerbread in really light colors, but when you bake it, it's actually quite darker than what some people do paint it with. But, you know, I'm sure there's variations, so we're going to use this pine cone color as our gingerbread color. Now we're gonna go ahead and take some of that same pine cone and do a little bit of brushing around the edges of this and then on the top, just to kind of stay true to this primitive style that this piece is in. I'm really wondering if this was hand, like handmade, you know, from someone's workshop, not necessarily a produced product because of the way that it's cut and the way that the little gingerbreads are different. Uh, they're not like a, from a mold. Either way, it's adorable. Once we finish all the dry brushing and let it dry, then we're gonna go ahead and seal it with that DIY Big Top clear coat. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and add some of some greenery, kind of like we did to the uh, postcard window that we made. Sometimes when I dry brush, I don't like the very thick brush strokes. So I'll just take my little sander and go back over them to give them more of a distressed look than those solid brush strokes. Now I'm just taking a pick uh, identical to the one we used on that window and I'm going to cut it apart to get the pieces that I want to put above that heart and center it 
I'm going to use my staple gun as well to get this put on and then I have to end up building the center of this up so I can add a bow to it and I really just do that with more greenery using my staple gun when I get it how I like it I do take one little piece and hot glue it over top of all of the staples just so none of them will show through i'm adding a pine cone in the center of these and then some of these little red berries i think they came off of a pick from dollar tree i'm not sure i just had them in my stash so i pulled them apart and just hot glued them into the leaves that were already there uh, to give it a little bit of a festive look We're going to go ahead and add this little red bow, red white stripe bow that was pre-made. I think I already told you, but I'm not sure. I bought these last year, maybe, or the year before. They were already pre-made, I think, from Walmart for just a few bucks. Now we're going to add one of those little pieces that we added some of that glitter and um, mica flakes to, just to kind of cover up that little center of the bow because it, did, it wasn't tied. It was just pre-made with a wire. Now, you know, we got to add some gold to this. So we're just going to add some rub and buff to highlight some areas. And then this piece will be finished. You all have to let me know if you like this upcycle of this primitive vintage item. I love how this turned out. Our next project is these two Christmas trees. They are wood. I had to glue the one of the larger slats together. And that's why you see the rubber bands on here. I use that triple quick and thick because one of these, or they had broke in half and at the top. What they do is they slide into each other. Right now I'm just using DIY aviary and beadboard to make some moss colored paint or a little bit lighter colored paint. We are going to paint the silver glitter that's on the edges of these trees and make it look more like crumbly moss or just leaves or stuff like that that's kind of glued to the edges by changing the color of the paint. I get asked a lot about this silicone stick that I'm using. This came in a bunch of those or a little lot that I bought that was used from someone that had been doing the chalk couture and was selling out. And now I bought the chalk couture, a bunch of the transfers and a lot of the panels and plaques and signs and never did use it. It's just not my thing. I think it's gorgeous, but I've used this tool. I got my money's worth out of it alone. And then some of the other things, the plaques and stuff, I did use them in upcycles, but not with the silk screens or the stencil type things that came with the chalk couture. So we're just gonna put a coat of this color on the edges of these. I don't dislike the silver. I really do like it too. And I don't mind if a little bit shows through. I'm not doing 100% coverage. I mean, it's pretty close, but I'm not stressing too much about it because a little bit of shine through this paint ain't gonna hurt anything. So we've done the big tree and now I'm just moving to the little tree. I didn't film all of this because it was just, you know, monotonous and not something that just needed to be shown over and over. Once this gets dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add some Mod Podge over top of it because it is the DIY clay paint. And if you want it to be sealed and it to be its original color out of the jar, you will need to seal it. So I have some Mod Podge that I've just put in this squirt bottle. I picked up several of these packs at Hobby Lobby so that I could use them on stuff. And then I love that it had the little cap that was attached because I'm the world's worst for losing caps. These bottles, they had a lot of them. They were not on sale, but I got two of these in a pack for $2.98. They had larger and smaller ones. So if you're looking for squirt bottles and you don't want to pay a lot, go to Hobby Lobby. They really excel in the pricing on this. And these supplies are down the, the aisles where you would buy acrylic or oil paints or canvases. They are in that section. Now this was our last project. So you all have to let me know what you think about this video. I've really been trying to figure out the best way to get videos out. I generally try to get them out every five to seven days. Sometimes it ends up being longer. I could put out a lot shorter videos and more of them. Would you comment below and let me know, do you like the longer videos to wait for? Or would you rather me just go ahead and do a video that has maybe three projects in it and release more more often? Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.